Happy Tuesday. It's the fourth Tuesday of the month and we're answering your questions. Hey there, Happy Guru Tips Tuesday. It's Asia Ray here and I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. This Thanksgiving, I was super grateful for all the people who watch and engage with our videos and I have some questions from a few of them today. Remember, if you have a question, you can email it to me at questions at workshopguru.com and we'll answer it on the last Tuesday of the month. So our first question is from Martin on Instagram. He asks, I'm loving your audition tips. Well, thank you, Martin. I'm a rookie actor who has a lot to learn and I have a question. Is it a good idea to be a part of a student film? Is it okay to work for free? Now, Martin, this is a wonderful question because as actors, we definitely need to value our worth in the industry and um, being compensated as an actor should be expected. However, there is a point at the beginning of your career when doing work for free really makes sense. There are really two things I want you to think about. One is, does this on-camera experience benefit you in some way? Um, do you still have some things to learn about being on camera and navigating working with a crew and all those sorts of things? If you do, then it probably is a great idea to find as many student films as you can work on and work for free. The second thing to think about is, What's the status of your credits and the status of the footage that you have for demo reels? If you could use a little upgrade in both of those areas, then student films are also an excellent way to get that. Now, one of the things that can be tricky about working for free is that you're usually working for copy, which means a copy of the finished product, a credit, and maybe food, right? But sometimes it can be hard to get that copy, right? Like the filmmakers don't get it done for some reason or you have trouble tracking them down afterwards. So I have a resource for you. Visit copyprovided.com and download a copy of a contract that you can share with the producers to make sure that they are on the same page with you about getting your copy after the shoot. Our second question is from Danielle. She says, hi, Adre. I'm an actor based in London after two beautiful years in LA. I'm struggling because I relate more to LA and I'm only familiar with the LA market. What would you suggest for an actor in a foreign market working so far out of the inner circle? This is a great question, Danielle. And first of all, I wanna say congrats on your move to London. That's great, super exciting. But you're right, there are some differences. So my advice to you is to really embrace the similarities. So let's think about this, right? What are the differences between Los Angeles and London in terms of being an actor there. One major one is that the size of the market is a lot different, right? There are a lot fewer projects happening in London in general. Um, another thing that's different is kind of the style of actor training that you find there. I'm sure you'll find a lot of your fellow UK actors have done conservatory two to three year programs where they've studied in a very intensive and focused way. Uh, and so there are fewer ongoing acting classes in London. Now, I had to talk to a friend of mine who was an actor in London and is now based in LA to get some tips for you because I'm really not that familiar, but she has some great ideas and they really center around the similarities in the market and that is that it's still based on relationships. So just like you're used to building relationships in Los Angeles, you need to do the same thing in London. And so I have some tips for you. One is the Actor Center. The Actor Center is a great resource Make sure that you get a membership there and network there. Use those to find workshops, uh, to network with fellow actors, to rent theater space and rehearsal space. The Actor Center is just a great place to go because it's really the hub of actors in your city. The second thing to do if you haven't already is to make sure you have a Spotlight profile, spotlight.com. So Spotlight is analogous to IMDB here, but also to Actors Access because casting directors post projects there agents submit actors there. So if you're going to be on the scene in London, Spotlight is definitely a great place to start. And beyond that, you want to try to get an agent. It's exceedingly important in London to have an agent. There aren't that many projects. There are casting director workshops there, so make sure to find the places where those are. There are fewer than in LA, but they do exist. So make sure that you're building relationships with casting directors as well through workshops and just get that going. As with LA, the best way to get an agent is through referral. So the people that you meet at the Actor Center and through your workshops and classes can help you with that. So best of luck, Danielle. Now, if you are asking me about maintaining relationships in LA 
if you have plans to come back to LA for a period of time, and this is just kind of a, a little stop for you in terms of your career, then I would say that a great way to continue to nurture the relationships that you built here is by developing an email newsletter. It's a great way to stay in touch with your fans from afar. You can stay in touch with them via email, but also via mailings. So make sure that you know who is on your target list here and that you make sure that they stay abreast of the fact that you're still an actor, you're just working abroad now, and that you'll be back. So I hope that helps. Now our third question is from Jessie. She asks, I was wondering, when you do workshops, is it more effective to focus on one casting director in an office or to try to see multiple people in the same office? Now, Jesse, this is a great question. This is one that people often have when they're using a strategic approach to casting director workshops. Um, I would say that you can do it both ways, but personally, I think it's more effective to build a relationship with one person in the office if you can. Remember, it's all about individual and authentic personal relationships. So just because people work together doesn't mean they necessarily talk about the actors they meet or you know that they love in workshops. So the more times you can get in front of one person or really reach out to one person, it really you know follows that marketing rule of seven. The more they see you and know you and get to experience how wonderful and talented you are, the more they know, like, and trust you, right? Now there are instances where you just can't find enough workshops with one person at the office or there just don't seem to be enough opportunities to connect. And in that case, I would say, focus on multiple people in the office and make sure that it's clear to them that you are meeting other people in the office, right? Like I might send a postcard and say, hey, um, Jesse, make sure to say hi to Asia Ray. I saw her in a casting workshop last week, right? So just treat them like people <laughs> as you do and build those relationships in a way that makes sense. But yes, I believe focusing on one person makes the most sense. I hope that helps. So that's it for today's questions. If you have any, I'd love to hear from you. Email them to me at questions at workshopguru.com and I'll be sure to answer them in a future episode. And if you love this content, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and share it with your friends. I'll see you next week.